Cap Air is considered to be the number one airline in all of Portugal, but is this really true or are they actually a bad airline? Well, today I decided to take two flights with the first being within Europe and the second one international in order to answer this very question. And throughout this video, things definitely had their ups and downs. The reason for this is because when you're flying within Europe, you get one type of layout and one experience. But when you fly international, it's completely different and often there's a lot more to do. And so far last night when I was doing the check-in for the inter-Europe flight, it was actually pretty good. So after getting the check-in email, I was brought to the main website before being randomly assigned a seat since everything costed extra. And after agreeing to my baggage allowance and that I had nothing dangerous, I ticked off some security questions and then I was all checked in for my flight. So now that we're all checked in, I think the next thing we're gonna do is head inside the terminal to grab our boarding pass. And then apparently there's some cool lounges that we could check out. So fingers crossed, everything goes smooth. Making my way into the airport, I was able to find the tap desks pretty quickly, but I needed a kiosk. And unfortunately, after finding one, they didn't have tap as an option. So instead, I needed to log back into their website to get a digital boarding pass because of a very specific reason. All right, so for some reason, TAP didn't have a kiosk where I could use it to print my boarding pass, which is super strange because pretty much every airline has that these days. And the reason why I didn't end up going to the check-in desk to print off the boarding pass is because my carry-on baggage is overweight, which means they then probably would have weighed it and then I would have had to pay extra for a checked bag. And for context, if they end up catching me, I'll have to pay at a minimum $50 extra for this flight and $150 for the one later in this video. So hopefully I don't end up getting caught. But at least getting the boarding pass online was pretty easy. And now that we have that, the next step is going to be heading through security and then we can finally go and check out the lounge. And as usual, since it was a European airport, security went super fast. And before I knew it, I was through and into the main terminal. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Airport security in Europe is way better than North America. It is so much quicker. It is so much more efficient and everyone just knows what they're doing and on top of that to make things even better i never get double inspected while i'm in europe so we're gonna have to add a point to the tally for that but now that i'm through security i think it's time to go check out some lounges because apparently i have access to a few of them and i'm pretty sure i'll be able to find at least one or two but even though i had access it turns out that some of the lounges were in areas that i couldn't even get to which i learned the hard way by hiking through this massive airport so it turns out this airport is super confusing there are some lounges that are only available to people find a certain places and so far I've went to two of the wrong ones but hopefully this third one is the actual one I need to be at and to make my life even harder these lounges were horribly marked making it impossible to find but eventually I ended up getting to the VIP Sala lounge making my way inside this was one of the largest airport lounges that I have ever been to featuring meeting rooms tons of seating with natural light private seating areas for work and also views overlooking the concourse down below but now what was the food situation like well for this there were sandwiches bread with lunch meat spreads, tons of super healthy grab and go options, an entire salad bar where you can make whatever you wanted, more small snacks along with soup, main dishes with things like flatbread, wings, hot dogs, and more, wraps, and even more sandwiches with the crust cut off. But this wasn't all. That's because for the drinks, you could choose from pretty much any soda brand you could possibly think of. Tons of different types of juice to pick from, an absurd amount of beer choices, unlimited hard alcohols and wine. But my favorite part were all the different kinds of desserts. So I got myself an absolute feast which was delicious so i'll be honest that was probably one of the best lounges i have ever been to the food selection was insane there was so much food to choose from and on top of that it was super good there was also tons of different seating areas it was super large which means nobody was overcrowded and on top of that everything was super modern and the staff were incredibly friendly i don't want to give a solid 10 out of 10 because there's always room for improvement but that lounge was a solid nine and a half but anyways there's only about 15 minutes now until my flight is supposed to board so i thought i'd take this chance to tell you guys a little bit more about tap just in case you've never flown them before or have no idea what they are according to tripadvisor they were given three out of five stars but when it came to the customer reviews even though they were mixed the one star category had the most attention people complained about poor communication and cabin crew attitude that they have a bad history resolving canceled flights that they charged someone 165 dollars for an overweight carry-on and one person even said it was the worst airline they've ever been on and they had flown a lot but now on the flip side people said that after check-in the flights are perfectly fine that even if they're late they'll make up the time and one person even said that they won't fly on any other airline besides tap 
So obviously the reviews are pretty mixed. Some of them are really good, some of them are kind of mediocre. And personally, I have never flown them before, but they're supposed to be the best airline in all of Portugal. So I think it's time we try and find the gate and hopefully things are still on time. So making my way back through this massive airport, the board said that the flight was in fact still on time, but after making it to the gate, it turns out that the plane wasn't even there. Well, it says that our flight is still on time, but there's no plane at the gate. So I'm not sure if they're going to end up busting us to where it is, because after all, we are in Europe. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And literally, as I was saying this, the plane ended up pulling in. So I made my way into the line and trust me, things are about to get even worse. And after this flight, I still need to take the second one internationally, which is going to be an entirely different experience. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Time for top air flight number one. Hi there. Hi, welcome. Making my way through the cabin, I first passed by TAP's business class seats, which genuinely look super good. So if you want me to review those next time, let me know. But after that, I passed by the extended legroom seats before finally making it all the way to the back of the plane where I was going to be stuck in an aisle seat. Right off the bat, the first thing I noticed was that despite this being a short flight, there was actually an in-flight entertainment system, which I'll be checking out in just a bit. But now how about the comfort test? Well, first, checking out the butt cushion, I was super impressed. And even making my way to the back and headrest, this was one of the comfiest economy class seats I have ever sat in so far. And to make things even better, the seat also had a button to recline with a solid amount of pitch. All right, so some initial thoughts. This seat is surprisingly comfortable. Compared to some other airlines I've flown in their economy, this one is actually a pleasant surprise. The material is this kind of fabric, but it's still pretty good. And it's also nice to see that there's in-flight entertainment on a flight this short. But obviously there is still so much more that I need to explore, so we're gonna do that right now. And hopefully this flight goes smooth. Now, unfortunately, this was wishful thinking because things were about to take a turn for the worst but before that happened I looked around some more starting with the room underneath the seats which was actually a pretty solid size for carry-ons and even checking out the overhead bins they were also pretty solid for this short length flight. As standard in all of the planes these days I was also happy to find individual reading lamps and air conditioning which were all working and I was also super impressed with how clean this seat was but then I noticed it was 235 and we were supposed to have departed by now but for some reason we had not moved moved an inch. All right, bad news. Turns out the flight has been delayed 30 minutes because over in Lisbon where we're flying to, they have some traffic issues. So I guess planes can't land or something like that. So for now, we're just stuck at the gate waiting. Hopefully things don't get worse from here. And while we have time to kill, I may as well check out the in-flight entertainment. Right off the bat, there were a ton of different menus to choose from, but starting off with the movies, there was actually quite a good selection and even the new releases had some decent ones too. Up next, I decided to check out the TV shows, which didn't have as good a variety, but making my way to the music section, there were tons of things to choose from, which more than made up for it. After this, I found a section dedicated to wine, which was kind of funny since I had never seen anything like this before on a plane, but now it was time for my favorite part, which was the in-flight map. Overall, the software they used was super responsive, and it was similar to something you would see on Air Canada or Delta, with various views to choose from. But at this point, it was now 3.15, and we had finally begun to move. For the first flight of the day, I was going to be flying roughly an hour and a half from Barcelona, Spain to Lisbon in Portugal and soon enough it was time for takeoff. Now that we're in the air, I think it's time to explore some more. Up first, I noticed a power outlet underneath the TV for charging devices, which was great, before making my way down to the seat pouch. Inside, there was only one pamphlet about how to connect to the Wi-Fi, so we may as well check that out. Connecting to the network, I was brought to a confirmation page before being directed to their website, where it turns out you needed to buy internet plans unless you only wanted to text. With light, you could only access some things, premium you could access everything, including social media, but it turns out these were only for a certain duration, because if you wanted full access, access for the entire flight, that would cost you 30 euros, so I decided to pass. But now at this point, I noticed that the in-flight service had begun, so I decided to scan the QR code for the menu, which brought me to this PDF with all of the choices available for purchase, and to be fair, there were a lot. So after this, I got my tray table out, which was a solid size, but super messy, and I only ended up getting water for a strange reason. So now that I'm about halfway through the flight, I thought I'd share my thoughts so far. So like I said earlier, this seat is unreal. It is definitely one of the comfiest to 
economy class seats I have ever sat in before. My back is not sore whatsoever. It reclined super far, and overall I'd give it like a solid 9 out of 10. Definitely one of the best, if not the best. But the one weird thing that I will say is the inflate service. So they do give out complimentary water, but they don't ask you, you have to ask them. I don't know if it's like a Portuguese thing or a European airline thing. And on top of that, there are no snacks. But later in this video, when I fly the international route, they're supposed to be giving out a few meals. So make sure you guys stick around. And there's a few other things that we need to check out. There's only about 40 minutes left in this flight. So let's do that right now. And obviously the one big thing left is the bathroom check. Making my way inside, it was a super basic bathroom with everything you would come to expect, but it was super clean with a ton of headroom, which was great. But anyways, now that I was done in the bathroom, we had begun our descent into Lisbon, and before I knew it, we were coming in for landing. So now that I was done with the first flight, it was time for the second one internationally, which turned out to be something unlike I had ever experienced before. All right, so now that we're done our first flight on top air, it's time for the second flight. And this one's supposed to be pretty different considering the first one was only an hour and a half, and this one is supposed to be eight hours. And on top of that, we're flying from Portugal across the Atlantic all the way to Canada. And so far last night when I was doing the check-in process for the second flight, we got off to a kind of weird start. So after getting the check-in email, I was prompted to upgrade my seat for 665 euros which i passed on and luckily this time i had a window seat but when i went to complete the check-in i got this error message saying i was missing regulatory information so i do have the boarding pass and i am checked in but for some reason i have to go to the check-in counter i'm pretty sure it's because i need to show my passport since it's an international flight but the problem is my carry-on this carry-on in particular is 16 kilograms and on tap you're only allowed eight kilograms which means it is literally double and they would definitely weigh it beforehand meaning i would have to pay extra so my plan is to just head through security confirm my documents at the gate and more than likely they'll just check it for free there so let's see if this works also please ignore my voice i am operating off of three hours of sleep right now so making my way into the airport i had to avoid getting my carry-on bag weighed but this is when i spotted some kiosk machines so i wanted to see if i'd be able to confirm my passport here and after going through the whole process i managed to get my boarding pass resolving the issue from before so luckily i was able to use the kiosk machine to clear up to any of those issues so I didn't actually have to speak to anyone whatsoever so I think we're gonna be good with his overweight bag but now that we have our boarding pass and we cleared everything up I think it's time we head through security and go and find a lounge because I am starving and I definitely need water right now and that's because I may or may not have partied a bit too hard last night but after finding the security lines I was able to make my way through into the main terminal in no time at all so yet again European security is a billion times better than North America there's absolutely no issues whatsoever I got through incredibly fast and on top of that, I never get searched in Europe, which is great. So we're gonna have to add a point for that. But anyways, now that we're all through security, I think the next thing we have to do is actually go and find a lounge. I forgot to mention that Portugal is pretty much the main hub for TAP. And even though I don't have access to the airline lounge, I should have access to a few others. So let's go and check that out. And lucky for me, the lounges at this airport were much easier to find compared to the ones in Barcelona. And after making my way up the escalator, I arrived at the lounge ANA. Making my way inside, there was a bunch of artwork and jewels from Portuguese culture and views over overlooking the gates and runway down below. As for the seating, this lounge was decently sized with a bunch of areas to choose from like the primary lounge, sleep areas, smoking room, sports lounge, and also the main dining area. So how is the food? Well, for this, there was a bunch of sandwiches to choose from to grab and go along with some lunch meat and a bunch of different desserts. So I got myself a little bit of everything and overall, I'd say it was pretty solid. So overall, I'd have to say the lounge was pretty decent. The food selection was a little bit strange. I'm pretty sure you needed to order from a menu, but they had other things. And since I was in a rush, I did a quick grab and go. The staff were super nice. There was tons of seating areas, but I'm only gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10 because it was above average, but definitely not perfect. And now that we're all finished up in the lounge, it's time to head to the gate, but unfortunately it is literally on the other side of the airport. So hopefully we're not late. And it turns out I was actually late for the flight because it was already boarding and things were about to get much worse because there was nobody directing the security lines and I ended up going to the wrong area, which was the worst case scenario. Kids, if you're watching this video plug your ears that was the stupidest and passport control I've ever been in. Basically, they sent me to the wrong line, and then when I got to the right line is when my flight started boarding. I then the people were switching shifts, and he was taking his sweet ass time. So now I have about five minutes to make it to my gate. I am rightfully pissed off. So at this point, I needed to sprint my way through the airport in order to not miss my flight, and I made it just in the nick of time. Well, somehow we made it. Here you go. Passport? 
just need to see the sticker on the back. Have a nice day. Thank you. Have a good one. Time for tap air flight number two. Making my way out to the second flight, I was rudely told by one of the flight attendants what I could and couldn't film before making my way through the cabin towards my seat for this flight. Just like the one from earlier, this flight had a similar entertainment system with seats that were just as comfortable. And the legroom was also super good, which is important for an eight hour flight. Now, just like the one from earlier, this seat had a bunch of room underneath for bag storage and a seat that reclines with a pretty solid amount of pitch. But one of the things that was different was everyone got their very own pillow. All right, so some initial thoughts so far. The seats are pretty identical to the first flight. Same material, just as comfy, and overall they might actually be the exact same. The layout itself is also extremely familiar. It's pretty much identical to the flight from earlier. But the one main difference on this flight is that we get complimentary pillows, which is super cool, especially for these eight hour flights. And the other thing that happened so far on this flight is that when I was boarding, the staff got really, really sassy at me. They said I could film everything, but just not the crew, which no airline has ever told me before, including the tab flight from earlier. So we'll see how this goes. It turns out things were about to get a little bit stressful, but before then, let's explore the seat a bit more. Just like the first flight, the pouch on the back of the seat was quite identical, but this time there was actually a safety pamphlet, which was nice to see. Making my way to the overhead, I was happy to find that the reading lamps and air conditioning were both working, but when it came to the bin space, there wasn't enough room for half of the passengers, which caused a little bit of a disaster. All right, so we ran into a pretty big issue. So I got super lucky and I got on early, so I had enough space for my backpack and carry-on. But because we're on such a small aircraft and on an international flight, pretty much every single bin is full. So at this point, we're only halfway boarded and half of the people have extra carry-ons that they can't even put above. I'll be honest, I don't really understand why TAP would book a smaller aircraft when they have big ones for an eight-hour international flight when they know people are going to be bringing a ton of stuff. So right now is an hour absolute shit show. And because of all the hassle, we are now delayed. We're off to a fantastic start. And because of all the drama, we had missed the original departure time, and the next 20 minutes or so ended up being a game of luggage Jenga, but finally, at 11.37, we began to push back from stand. For the second flight of the day, I was gonna be flying roughly eight hours from Lisbon across the Atlantic to Toronto, and after getting to the runway, it was time for takeoff. Now that I was in the air, the crew began coming around for the first meal, so I got my tray table out, which was identical to the first flight, but only cleaner, and for lunch, I got chicken, rice, beans, a bun, carrot cake, and something else that I have no idea what it was. So when it came to the food, we had two options. There was pasta and also chicken. When it came to the pasta, they didn't say what kind it was, so I wasn't sure if I wanted that. So I elected to go for the chicken, and it was definitely interesting. There was way more beans and rice than chicken itself, and I'm not sure what kind it actually was. But for dessert, there was carrot cake and also a bun, but overall, I'd have to give it a solid 6 out of 10. It definitely wasn't bad, but it wasn't the greatest. But overall, a free meal is a free meal. And I'll be completely honest here, most of the things like the in-flight entertainment and seat were identical to the flight I was on earlier, and I watched movies for the next 6 hours of this flight until it was time for the second meal. Alright, so for the second meal, we got a sandwich and a chocolate bar. Overall, pretty solid. I'd give it a solid 7.5. Now that there's only about an hour until landing, I might as well go ahead and share my final thoughts. So for the first flight we had earlier, I think I paid $200 for that ticket, which is actually extremely fair, and it was the cheapest one available. And all things considered, I would say it's super solid. Now, the only downside to the first flight was that massive delay, but I still don't know if it's the airline or the airport or what that situation is. And then for the second flight, I think I paid about $540 total, which is super, super cheap, especially when you're flying transatlantic. I'd have to give that a 9 out of 10 because it was an 8-hour flight and my back did not get sore whatsoever. But now there's only a little bit left in this flight and we're going to be landing quite soon. So I'm going to go see if there's anything else that we need to check out or see. And the only thing I could think of which was left was the bathroom tour. Just like the first flight, this bathroom was pretty much identical, only being a little bit messier since I was one of the last people to use it. But after making my way back to my seat, it turns out we had begun our descent into Toronto and before I knew it we were coming in for landing. So if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and watch this one next where I flew Europe's best versus worst airline.